I was talking about testing and somebody had asked about testing on the portal series and it's a really great example. So I'm going to dive into that. Uh, but first, clearly my channel, I don't make long produced, heavily produced videos and talk for four hours at a time or something. God knows I babble in a 10 minute segment. I try to limit it to 10 minutes, 20 minutes, just as a way to kind of have them focus down. Uh, but I really appreciate feedback and I really appreciate uh, comments and I read the comments. Even like for my games, I don't read reviews. I read the comments. I'm way more interested in seeing what the community has to say about things or their, their feedback about it. And this is kind of partial to this question here. So the question was about Portal 1 and Portal 2 playtesting. Now, in some ways, the Portal series is, or any puzzle game is kind of the perfect testing ground, right? Because you have a puzzle and a solution. Did they get to the end of the map? No, well then they didn't complete the puzzle. There's a problem with it. Now there's a bunch of inside of that of what, why the puzzle worked or didn't work, but you just have this really crisp, clear, did they get it or not? And you don't have to ask them afterwards. They will be able to demonstrate that. Um, as somebody who worked on puzzle games and then has now play tested other people's puzzle games. Uh, I once had to play test a puzzle game on stage wearing a headset, a uh, fantastic contraption while people watched. Don't ever make anyone do that. That is like the most horrific thing because puzzles just do have that. Just you are either going to solve it or not. You are not going to muddle your way through it. It's a lot of pressure. Um, that said, uh, the portal series, we, we, the first one in particular, we watched everybody play. And one of the things you always want to remember is you want to collect a lot of data because we watched somebody play the original Portal series. Now this is, this is some pressure, right? This is like, we'd bring people in to play and you would have the team working on it in the room watching. And we got somebody who didn't understand that some of the areas you could put a portal and some of them you couldn't. Think how that play test went. They maybe got to the third or fourth map before we called it. This is a portal one. This is not that difficult of a game. And uh, it was depressing. And then we brought people, oh, there's someone else in to play a test just to kind of clear that out. Um, but the game itself, Portal, is just, again, so clean. And it, the game, you know, Robin Walker was kind of really behind, I think, the idea of just the approach to building it out and, and how to approach it. And he was right of like, it is just the simplest iteration of like, show someone something, teach them it teach them something else, teach them something like do the, do that, do that, do that, and then combine them and then combine. Like it is just a great iteration way of, of training. And you can see if it's working or not. We also test the story that way as well. Um, but so you're probably, unless you're making a puzzle game, you are not going to have that clear of testing. So then you have to think of, well, how do we do this in a first person shooter? And we want to know how they get through the map. Now we can know if they get to the end of the map, but we don't know a lot of the detail inside of that. So if you are play testing for somebody, and we always ask this of people, be verbose, talk about it, talk about what's going through your head, how you're approaching things, um, what your thoughts are, if you're lost, um, that's super helpful. Now, occasionally we get somebody who's performative when you do that, and they think they're putting on a act because we would be sitting in the same room, which is why it's good not to be in the same room, but let them know you're watching. Um, anybody at Valve who remembers the, I think it was Wall, 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 uh, play test of uh, episode one uh, knows what I'm talking about. Uh, but it's it it's not as clean of testing, right? And so what you have to do then is a you're observing so you can understand if they're making it or not, or they're talking about it, and hopefully you get some verbose feedback, or you make predictions. Um, now you can have people fill out stuff afterwards, but I don't think I've ever actually read any any survey we've we've ever put out. Like they, people spend a lot of time making very nice surveys, but I never thought they were that valuable. Um, and this is the same thing with uh, uh, Stray Bombay. We would be very much about testing the game by watching people. Uh, and then, you know, thanks to COVID, uh, all remote testing, I guess. Uh, but I really, my favorite is remote testing, everybody else in a room watching because you don't need to win an argument anymore because you see that argument played out. You see what people are getting or not getting. And you see it really clearly. And for the most part, I'm going to give an example of when it's not, uh, you really get the truth uh, out of people by just watching them that way. And that is just super, super valuable. But right. So if you don't have the testing, how do you, how are the, the testing of like a puzzle game, you've got to make those predictions. And then you can make those predictions 
as simple as before a session being like, I think this is gonna be a problem or this is gonna work. Or you can make them public, not publicly, but like before you do a public release, you can say, hey, I bet you this is where they stumble with this or where they have problems. Now you need to be clear about your predictions. And that's why it's kind of good to kind of make them like bets because people, if you put money on them, you don't have to put money on them, but we'll, we'll, when you make those kind of bets, you have to define them clearly. And you wanna make sure that you're being clear about it because you don't learn anything if you're not measuring. And this is how you can measure for these abstract things. I'll tell you this, uh, when we were re releasing the Vive uh, HTC, that first GDC, um, we had a thing called the Full Monty. One of the engineers, Monty, realized we were not gonna get wireless controllers in time. And so they had to have USB plugs in them and the USB plug went to something on your hip. Uh, and to hold that on your hip, we had this whole little belt you had to put on. And I was sure, man, every review is gonna be talking about this effing belt. Cause I had gotten so used to the crazy VR that we were seeing that I had forgotten how magical that was. And then the minute we released a Mobile World Congress and GDC, nobody talked about that full Monty at all. He was entirely correct. It would work perfectly and it was awesome. I learned something there, right? Like you gotta step back and remember what you're showing is, in that case was magical to people while you had thought it was mundane. Um, but so you wanna make sure that you're kind of doing that outward testing and you're measuring it by making predictions and going forward. And like I said, observed play tests are always my favorite, but they're actually not always the truth. So, uh, but they, they work out for me. Uh, so for Portal 2, we were doing a lot of observed play testing by video. So we had recorded everything and it was really cool because you could go see like deaths and like, it, oh, and I guess we did this in Left 4 Dead 2 then eventually where this guy Charlie had made it where you can like scrub to deaths and see exactly like what happened and, and going on. And for Portal 2, we just had everything recorded. But the play, those recorded play tests still weren't the truth because you would have people who would play the game, they would play single player like this. And then in the interview afterwards, it'd be like, Funniest game I ever played. I couldn't stop laughing. What? Uh, because they just didn't think anyone was watching. So they were laughing inside, but they were serious about the puzzle solving. Where if they were playing Portal 2 co-op, um, they thought they were t talking to somebody else during that. And they were laughing and having fun. And they would, you know, their face would show it. And so I would send screenshots of, I would wrote Portal 2 co-op. Eric and Jay wrote the single player and I would send them screenshots of my people laughing and their people frowning. Uh, Portal 1 single player is funnier than Portal 2 co-op. It is. It is demonstrably funnier. Those guys wrote just brilliant stuff, right? But there is a lie. And so you could manipulate it. And so it's always one of those things you got to kind of watch out for and have a, have, a, have a little bit of mix. But that, that was a lot of fun with that. Um, you know, in the Portal 2 co-op is we had one other weird little kind of thing to that testing was we had we wanted to make it where you were required to have two people so it's just gonna be one person solving it and the other person not doing anything sometimes that was visual you got to be like you know instructing that other person with the big thing moving around uh, and other times you just had to do it together but here's the thing as a person who wrote for it and i had to, had to test what i wrote uh you could solve the whole game uh single play you can with one person holding two controllers um it is not easy, but you can do it. Um, but yeah, but that was a rule. And, and we play test, we try it, we try to break it. Um, and, you know, it, again, it's about play testing and it's about getting enough numbers through so that you're not making that fatal mistake of deciding that nobody's going to understand that some surfaces are portable and some surfaces aren't. And again, uh, it is free, so it's not like I'm making money off of this, but if you come to our Discord, if you have a game that you need playtesters, literally, I offer that because I've learned that lesson that you can't take a single data point and you need a lot of data points, and so you need to get as many as you can. So discord.gg slash straight Bombay, discord.gg slash straight Bombay. Uh, but, or don't, and that's fine. But yeah, so the portal uh, testing was really, really interesting to me just because it is such a beautiful example of gameplay testing and how much you can learn from it. So thanks for the question. And again, more questions, happy to, to, to answer them. Again, I'm not gonna talk about things at, at Valve that are in public or you know been discussed. And I really prefer not to talk just about Valve stuff, but just games in general. But eh, whatever you kids decide, I don't know. I mean, to some extent, I'm still, I guess, gonna ignore. Eh, or not. <laughs>